Three Corners is just your average small town. Standing on the banks of a flood-prone river with a large pub anchoring the village at a once famous three-way intersection. Now it's simply convenient. As people chase the country dream, the country lifestyle, just not the unceasing agricultural workload. Population, 2,000. Ish. But like all small towns, scratch the surface and you'll be surprised at what you find underneath. In that sense, Three Corners is really no different to any other small town I know. Except perhaps for some of the characters you might meet. Rattle on Bones. Rattle on Bones was the dusty, sneezy, packed to the rafters, second hand antique junk shop in Three Corners. It was owned by Mr. Rattle, and the tiny grey door opened onto Bone Alley that ran all the way up to the graveyard, hence the name. It was a glorious treasure trove of utter magnificence. Grandfather clocks and vinyl, gramophone records and china. A skeleton sat at the counter along with Mr. Rattle, and some days you'd be hard pressed not to mix them up. A dimly lit warren with glass cabinets full of curios and a winding perilous wooden staircase for the hardcore treasure hunter up into the attic area. Unbearably hot in summer and requiring a coat, scarf and beanie in winter. Mr Rattle was the go-to man if you needed a replacement cup for a tea set, a missing fork from the silverware or a cake splate. He had mower parts and golf clubs, old tattered teddies that glared with one eye sitting crookedly among the second-hand cloth-bound novels. A part or a piece, an item you couldn't name or something you hadn't even known that you needed. Mr Rattle could always find exactly what you were after. But what drew the kids in almost every day on the way home from school was a cute but slightly creepy yellow rabbit in the rafters. No one knew who it once belonged to, and in fact, even Mr Rattle couldn't remember how it got there. He claimed he didn't have a ladder long enough to get it down, but it sat, staring, grinning, and some would swear winking at the kids below. It watched all those who came in, and all those who walked past the big dusty window, grimy hands on the glass, peering in to see more of the curios on display. The hipster couple buying the butter churns, the renovator making off with a box of cabinet handles, the old ladies that clucked and searched for memories, the men who hunted for bargains, and the children who came to whisper and point and scramble through small spaces, finding old metal cars, spinning tops, feather boas and bits and pieces of who knows what, the yellow rabbit in the rafters would watch it all. The small boy in the aeroplane t-shirt came every weekend. Too small to go to school, he came in with his father and while his dad fossicked, he quietly sat in the big emerald velvet chair by the counter with Mr Rattle and watched the yellow rabbit back. He was the first to notice that the yellow rabbit had moved. He didn't say anything at first, assuming that grown-ups were responsible for it like most things. But then, the following weekend, it had moved again, and Mr Rattle had a moon boot on from tripping over the Foot Rot Flats collection in the old woven basket, so he couldn't have been the one to move it. And when he shyly asked, Mr Rattle ummed and ahed and told him that it had always been there. It was almost like a good luck charm, he said, keeping an eye out on everyone. He said exactly the same thing the next week when the rabbit was right above the counter and when it was by the dormer window on the other side of the shop too. And that time, the small boy was almost positive that the yellow rabbit smiled some more and then closed its eyes. Years passed And when he thought back over it, he put it down to an overactive imagination and a small child's steadfast belief in magic. Of course, he didn't believe in that anymore. 
Later, when he was going to university, he made one last foray into Rattle on Bones, looking for some cheap rugs for his room at college, when the yellow rabbit caught his eye once more. He asked again about how it was always moving, and Mr Rattle laughed and told him that it had always been right there. As he left, had he just paused and looked back, he would have seen Mr Rattle and the Yellow Rabbit exchange a small smile and a wink as they both settled back down to watch the passing traffic outside their little world of wonders. Today's episode of Three Corners was produced by our maestro, Posty, and featured the spelt-like tones of Jack. For more stories, go to hittheroadjack.com.au or subscribe to the Three Corners podcast. 